Liz Crosby here with another yoga flow. I'm going to be calling this one up against the wall. <laughs> um, all joking aside, the wall has proven to be a very, very useful ally in opening up so many spaces in the sphere of existence. So I want to share as many wall downloads with you as I possibly can in one hour. I am going to recommend a strap. You can use a dog leash or a belt if you'd like to get creative. And two locks. Also, if you don't have locks, books work nicely. I just, I can't uh, do this flow without a little bit of, of propage to help us navigate into these spaces. But I, I really think that there are certain blind spots that go unnoticed and consistently pervade and persist in our systems. And now that we're all stuck at home, we have this profound opportunity to work with wall. I presume all of you have a wall. You can, if you want to, use socks so you don't mark up your wall. Uh, also, maybe clean your feet if you're not going to use socks. I took a shower before this so that I'd have clean feet. And uh, maybe, maybe make a designated wall space for you and your roommates that you can constantly utilize on a regular basis. Because oftentimes in classes in the studio setting, we don't have time to get to the wall, usually. Also, we don't have the space. If there's too many yogis in an in a individual yoga class, a single yoga class, then there may not actually be enough wall space for everyone to utilize. So again, this is one of those opportunities wherein we can actually benefit from our situation. So transmuting the negative into a positive. We'll start by lying down on our backs because a lot of the work that we do against the wall is going to be especially with inversions. So we want to make sure that our core is activated first and foremost. Light on back. Plug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice warm embrace. Rocking gently from side to side, massaging the back body. Start to connect to your yogi breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. All right. And then bring the hands to the wall. Give yourself a little bit of distance from the wall so you can press your palms into the wall. This is, I'm sure you probably already guessed, intended to replicate what it's like to be handstanding. So here it's kind of like we're tucking into a Vakasana crow pose. Now extend right leg out. And exhale, drop back in. Keep pressing the hands into the wall. Left leg extends out. And exhale, drop back in. Both legs extend out. And exhale, drop back in. All right, inhale to extend back out. Keep the left leg hovering, right leg lifts. And slowly lower. Exhale, left leg lifts. And slowly lower. That's the side now, right leg. Extend back out, left leg out to the side now. Back out, both legs out wide. And extend back out, hold. Here for five, four, three, two, one. On your knees in, give yourself a nice big squeeze. I love it. Again, we're gonna find some more proprioception, learn how to channel a little bit better with the use of wool. Soles of the feet to the mat, hips distance apart, press up, lift up, roll spine up, hands come behind the back, interlace your fingers, draw shoulder blades together, press chest towards chin. Breathe into the back of the neck, activate jaw there, bundle the chin lock. Lengthen the cervical spine, send that breath in, make a sound. And gently releasing the anterior, extend the arms straight up, throw traction with the legs and heels up, slowly lower, spine down. One group at a time, sit bones on the very last. And then reach away for the knees, side to side to release in your lower back. Hug your knees in, start to take some rocks forward and back. Massaging the whole length of the spine. And again, if you'd like, take seven arms and legs. Rock up into your boat, rock up into your shoulder stand. All right. Rock up, cross shins, plant palms, tables up. Take a couple cat cows, inhale as you melt the heart forward and up, so you reach your gaze up. 
Exhale, round the spine, knee to knee. Inhale, peel the chest forward. And exhale, into round. Take it into your bear pose, hip circles, shoulder circles, the neck feels good in the spine. Puppy dog pose. Walk the feet back, walk the hands forward, melt heart towards mat, re extend the sit bones up towards the ceiling. Breathe into your thoracic spine. Maybe the whole chest meets the ground. And this is another problem that you can utilize the wall for. You can bring your feet to the wall and then pressing through the big toe mounds against the wall. Maybe lift your hips up. It's big, it's really big. Slowly lower. Knees back to the earth if you lift with them. And then roll the spine forward into your six. All right, maintain that connection. If you didn't explore that variation of puppy dog, bring the big toe mounts to the wall. And so often people will turn their legs off in their prone exercises. So press the big toe mounts into the wall and notice how you can pull energy up through the legs, squeezing your thighs together, slide your elbows towards your rib cage, drop the right ear towards the right shoulder, let chin off the chest, left your left shoulder. And notice how much more energy you can pull up when the legs are even just ever so slightly engaged. Walk the hands to the outer edges of the mat, let's go into your fingertips, spread the elbows wide, lift your chest up, drop the right shoulder, and gaze over your left. Inhale through center. And exhale to twist. Moving side to side again, opening up the chest cavity, the shoulder girdle. Amazing. Back through the center as you inhale. Exhale, slowly release the spine back down. So keep pressing the feet into the wall. Now hands come alongside the rib cage. Hover the hands off of the floor. See if you can find some lift in your upper spine, engaging the upper core. Beautiful, now add the strength of the arms, press up, lift up, cobra, wrap up the single shoulders back, pump the chest, broad across the collarbones. Amazing, slowly lower the spine back down. All right, slide the arms back forward into your sphinx. And tuck the toes, rise the hips up and back, dolphin pose. Walking the feet in a little bit. And I'm going to show you all a little trick for finding adduction in the arm muscles here. So lower the knees down to the ground. Now take one of your blocks, place the block between your forearms. And this will be brief. So again, all the block stuff, if you don't have blocks, it's just going to be brief, brief usage to imprint. Tuck the toes, six legs up and back, dolphin pose. Squeezing the block. Now try to lift the block up off of the mat and lower. Lift and lower. A couple times. All right, lower, release the block. So now that our arms are engaged, our core is engaged, Press up, lift up, back into your dolphin. Lift the elbows up into your downward facing dog pose. So we're gonna modify our sun salutations today. From downward facing, walk the hands in a little bit. Now walk the feet up the wall, coming into an L shape. Now, if you want to keep the feet glued to the wall, coming into a right angle, keep squeezing the arms together like we did with the block exercise just a minute or just a second ago. Maybe one leg extends up. And then just for fun, lower the foot down. See if you can lower it down to toe tap the wrist. You can straddle out wide, or you can bring the leg straight forward and through. All right, we'll just do one leg first. That foot comes back to the wall. Now walk the hands back out, coming into a plank with the feet on the wall. Pausing for a couple 
the breaths here. Maybe try and ride across and here. Draw left knee towards left tricep. And extend back. And then walk it all the way down into your plank pose. Exhale, lower through Chaturanga. Hug elbows in. Woo! Flip one foot at a time. Inhale into your earth and look our little shoulders back. Exhale, roll our toes, hips lift up and back, downward facing dog pose. So we're going to do two, because I just did one leg. You went with me on the first side. I did the left leg on the first side, so we'll do the right leg on the second side. Walk the hands in a little bit. Walk the up wall. So this is a blind spot in a lot of yogis' practices. This straight line between humerus bone and the rest of the spine is often eluded, elusive, because we stay in Chaturanga land, right? Plunge land. Right leg can extend up. One continuation of energy, one straight line. Maybe lower that right foot down. You can straddle it wide if you like. Toe tap. Back up again. Straight forward, maybe. Toe tap. Back up again. All right, both feet to wall. Walk it back out into your plank pose. Now notice you have to actually send energy through your feet. Spread the shoulders wide, lift the space between the shoulder blades, right knee, right tricep, Vajrasana. And back, walk the feet down into your plank. Woo, exhale, lower your Chaturanga. Inhale into your earth move, go roll the shoulders back, pop chest. And exhale, roll over toes, hips lift up and back. Downward facing dog pose. From downward facing, we're going to go right into a little standing sequence using the wall. Right leg extends up and back. Now walk the hands in towards your left foot. You may not go very far, that's okay. But eventually, we're working towards a standing split here. Amazing. And then walk it back out again. Into your downward facing dog pose, roll forward into plank. Exhale, right knee to nose. Now see if you can hover the right foot before you step it through. Left foot swings down to 45, and you can bring the outer edge almost to the wall. Definitely the heel to the wall. And this will actually help with Padavada engagement. I know it's more of a straight line instead of a 45, but it will help you to seal the outer edge of the foot down. Now to the thighs. Inhale, rise. Warrior one. Sink low into the stance. Gaze up, lift your heart up. Open it out to your warrior two. Adjust the stance. Heel to arch. Here you can even, if you want to, bring the left hand to the wall. Shoot energy through the left hand, see how it charges up the upper half. Reverse it. Now see if you can. Left hand to ankle or uh, thigh or calf. Right hand can reach back. See if the right hand can connect to the wall. And see if you can find some more openness across the side body and the chest. In your reverse warrior. And now as you rise. Now straighten through the right leg. Heel to left foot for a shortened stance. Deepen in the right hip crease. Six to the right arm forward reach. Right hand to ankle, shin, floor, left arm extends up and twist the spine open. Gaze up, left fingertips, deep ujjayi breaths. All right, left hand down to mat. Scoot left foot forward to the left. So going over these postures, these shapes with two feet grounded, inhale to so find length, exhale to forward fold. A little something for you here, if you have the two blocks or the books, can frame your right foot. Hands on blocks or books, straight through your arms, round on the upper spine. Plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket. See if you can pull the right foot off the mat just an inch. So not only are we emanating energy out, but we're pulling energy in, exploding and imploding. Now set the right heel down, block underneath the big toe mound, and forward fold it again. Enjoy the hamstring stretch. Gently release. Block and the outer to the right foot if you need it. Left hand to block, right hand to sacrum. Pull the right shoulder back. Maybe right arm can extend up and twist. 
from the navel. And as you twist, gaze is at the right fingertips. All right. Both hands back down to mat. So this is where <laughs> things get fun. Take both blocks, highest settings. You can slide that right foot back a little ways and you're going to bring the left foot to the wall. So most people are not emanating energy out of their lifted leg in warrior three, half moon, and twisted half moon. So here we are, warrior three. And again, shoot energy out through the left foot. Pull that energy forward and across the chest. And do warrior three if you want to, maybe. Hands can come into the heart space. Kind of fun, isn't it? Maybe airplane mates. Maybe extend arms forward. back to blocks. Now roll your left hip to stack on top of the right. Toes point towards the side of the room. Keep emanating energy out of the left foot. Right hand to block. Left arm sweeps. Good. And full blown. Sending life force energy into all the corners. The wall. A nice reminder to push through the foot. Now left hand back down to block. Square off those hips. Don't worry about Shavasana. We're going to get in some back beds with the wall in just a few moments. Hips squared off now. Right arm can extend up. Firm navel as you twist. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Amazing. Both hands back down. Two blocks. And then while we're here, releasing those blocks, coming into a standing split since we already did the work with the wall. Now draw your left thigh into your chest. Root to rise, come to stand. Right hand to right hip. Left piece of fingers and thumb, catch left big toe. Extend left leg forward. Let's get these guys in. Open the left leg out to the left, maybe grow a tree branch. Amazing, back to the center, reach across. Right hand catches outer edge of knee or outer edge of foot, reach left hand back. Twist, firm navel as you twist. And back into center. Interlace fingers around left sole of the foot, maybe slowly lower it down. This is why you shake to the ground. Fun stuff. And root to rise. Go to stand. Releasing the foot, hands to hips, or her branches here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back, warrior three. Hands to mat, standing splits. All right, and then left foot to wall, hands plant, right foot to wall. Instead of, and you can just stay in your L shape, feel free, or walk it in. Walk it in, walk it in, walk it in. Going into toes and nose. So just the toes and the nose are connecting to the wall here. Finding a straight line. Spiral the eyes that was towards each other. Plug the arms into the shoulder sockets, push the floor away. Again, if you need to, find a spotter. You do need a certain amount of upper body strength to walk it in like this. You can always cartwheel out if you need to, but be wary of any neighbors or hard objects. And then walk it back out again if you have it in you. Again, cartwheel out if you need to. Coming all the way back down into your downward facing. Dog pose. Whew. All right. Left leg extends up and back. Walk the hands in, coming into a standing split against the wall. It's so fun. I love working with wall. Good stuff. All right. Enjoy. Just go as far as feels comfortable. Then walk it back out again, coming back into your downward facing with the left leg still extending. Exhale, knee to nose, come forward into plank pose. Gently sit the left foot between your palms. Right foot can swing down to even more of a 45 because we're aligning the average of the foot with the wall here, heel to heel. So if you were to draw a line through your left foot, it would intersect the back foot's arch. Inhale as you rise, warrior one. Back leg is straight, drive right leg forward as you drive left foot back, gaze up, lift your heart up. 
open it out to your warrior two stance. Again, can you touch the wall with your right hand? If you can, shoot energy through it and then beam that energy back through the left arm. Nice, beautiful. <laughs> Let's get in the front, right? Right hand to thigh or to calf. Reverse your warrior. Left hand can come to the wall. Maybe, maybe. Inhale as you rise. Straighten through that left leg. Pelter right before a short stance. Deepen the left hip crease, extend left arm forward reach. Left hand to ankle, shin floor, right arm extends up twist. From the navel to as you twist, gaze at the right fingertips. Beautiful, both hands to mat. Take both of your blocks. So you can take the blocks to the highest setting initially. As you get more proficient with your Mulabanda activation, you can lower the, down, the blocks down a few settings until eventually you don't even need the blocks. Straight through the arms, round in the upper spine, plug the right femur head bone into the right hip socket, foot left foot off of the mat just an inch. Exploding and imploding. We're doing a lot of emanating energy with the wall, reminding ourselves to pull that energy back in simultaneously. Left heel to mat, block underneath the big toe mount, and forward fold it again. All the little tricks for reminding ourselves how to engage, how to conduct energy. Unseen actions, supercharger practice. Block comes out from underneath, block comes the outer to your left foot. Right hand to the block, left hand to your sacrum. Stabilize your pelvic bowl and roll the left shoulder back. Now left arm can extend up and twist. From the navel and as you twist, gaze is up at the left fingertips, deep ujjayi breath. Amazing. Filling out space. Both hands back down to the mat. Take both blocks with you. Highest settings, and then so that you can connect the right foot to the wall, you can slide that left foot back a little ways. Right foot comes to the wall. In line with your hips, alignment is the key to divinity. Now, find your core engagement, spiral the inner right back towards the ceiling, push out through all of the balls of your right foot. So the outer arch down, let the inner arch up, find your pot of bondo, because we can engage it here. We're actually connecting to a surface now, get light in your hands. Maybe hands in the heart center. Little tiny micro bend the left knee spine. Protect the knee joint and maybe airplane wings. Maybe extend the arms forward. Woo! Great work. This is not easy. Hands come back to blocks. Left hand stays. Now rotate your right hip to stack. So right foot, toes point towards the side of the room now. Again, right hip stacking over left. Right arm can extend up and gaze up at the right fingertips. Ardha Chandrasana never felt so robust. Send that breath in, illuminate your universe. And then when you feel complete, reactivating these nadis, right hand back to block, square off those hips again. So toes are pointing back down to the earth. Again, spiral that inner right thigh towards the ceiling. Right hand stays, left arm sweeps up, twist it open, from the navel as you twist, and gaze at the left fingertips, deep ujjayi breaths, beautiful work, can feel you all reactivating nadis right now across time and space, wherever you are, left hand back down to block, Whew, all right. Almost done. We're, we're really lighting the hips on fire because I've got some more wall stuff for you. Now, coming into a little bit of a standing split without the wall. So, getting used to standing splits without wall as well. Draw your right thigh into your chest. Roots your rise. Come up into standing. Left hand to left hip. Right peace sign fingers and thumb. Catch the right big toe. Extend the right leg forward. Deep breaths, then you are illuminating these corners of your field of consciousness. These are really magnanimous shapes. Open the right leg out to the right. Maybe draw a tree branch. Beautiful, back through the center. 
You can take what you learned from the wall. Left hand can reach across, catch outer edge of the knee or outer edge of the foot. Reach your right hand back and twist. From the navel as you twist. So you're still emanating energy out the right foot, like you're pressing into the wall still. Back through the center. Interlace fingers around right sole of the foot. Slowly lower pistol squatters, take it down. So fun. All right. When you're ready, gather your core. One big pronounced burst of energy through the left foot. Ride it up like an elevator, yogis. Here we go. Press it up, lift it up, back into your Utita Asa. Nice work. Release hands to hips and grow branches. Here for five, four, three, two, one. Sweep it back, warrior three. Passing through warrior three once more. Hands to mat, standing splints. And again, bring the right foot to the wall. And please don't try this if it makes you nervous. Maybe you watch the first few times. Maybe you even get a, a friend, a housemate to help you so that you are safe. Walk the hands in, walk the left foot up the wall. You can take another L shape too. Feel free to work the L shape as long as you need to build the central core strength. And in some cases you need to excavate the shoulder girdle so that you can create this formation of humerus head bone and shoulder socket. Find the straight line. And then walk it back out again into your downward facing dog. Gotta love the wall flow. And release, take a moment in your down dog. Beautiful knees to mat, hips to heels, child's pose it out. So again, we are moving into some blind spots, so to speak. You might be generating a little bit more heat because of it as you move into spaces that don't commonly receive life force energy. It, it tends to burn up a little bit more, right? You tend to sweat a little bit more. You're also processing it mentally, and that can sometimes hinder our ability to breathe because our brain is so focused on sending signals to the musculature that we forget to breathe. So take your time with this. If you're sweating a little bit more than usual, that's okay. Roll the spine up through the seated. Okay, so this next one, it's very useful to have a little bit of extra cushion. If you have a rug carpet, then you may not need to do this. But if you don't have a rug carpet and you're working on a wood floor like me or another hard surface, then it is useful to roll your mouth up a little bit. Just giving you guys all my favorites. I love wool. So I'm going to roll it up just once. It's good for me. I got tough knees though. Can you roll it up a couple times? Please do so. All right. So let's start with the right foot forward. So you'll bring your left knee right up to the floorboard. All right. Left shin comes right up to the wall. Now walk the right foot forward. This is called King Arthur. Walk your hands up onto your right thigh, interlace, and then lift up. Hello, quadriceps, <laughs> right? So I had us do the standing posture first to temper this part of the body and get it hot so that this wouldn't be too intense. Okay, the hips don't come to the wall quite yet. This one's gnarly. If they do, maybe grab opposite elbows up and overhead. Deep breaths. All right, here we go. So now, let the hips dip. This is where the blocks can come in handy too on either side if you need them. Let the hips dip down towards the floor while engaging Mula Bandha. Keep firming the pelvic floor. So crucial. Now what's fun about using the wall here is you know where your foot is. This is actually where I got my very first overhead grip. It was a very big moment for me in my practice. I know exactly where I was. I know what day it was. I know who was teaching the class. I knew who was beside me in the class. It's a momentous occasion. So be patient if you're not grabbing the foot today, but maybe then uplift the spine. Find your core engagement. Maybe reach back. Hands can come to the wall. Push the hands into the wall. And then you can actually walk the hands down and then maybe one day, oh my gosh, there's the foot. Right, wall is our friend here. And then 
gently release. All right, so now working towards straightening through the right leg, half splits. Slide the right foot forward as far forward as feels comfortable. Mmm, so delicious. Keep scissoring thighs together, activate Bula Banda. Just here for a couple more breaths. And then same, same here. If you have the hands lifting off of the wall or off of the floor, then maybe hands come to wall and catch the foot. Again, this is advanced stuff. Feel free to skip it and just take it as food for thought for a future practice. Gently release. Not done yet. We bend the right knee. Walk the right foot behind your left wrist. Release the right knee behind the right wrist. Half pigeon. Inhale as you find length. Exhale your forward fold it. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, man. I told you. It's, it's really potent medicine working with the wall. So be patient again if you're not experiencing the, the, the hand to foot connection quite yet. Walking the hands back in. Maybe you're just working on standing or staying upright. That's okay. Maybe hands come to wall. Press the hands into the wall. Oh, it's so delicious. Maybe catch the foot. If it's there. And then gently release. Wow. All right. Walk the right really Extend the right leg back out. We'll retrace our steps. And then we bend the right knee. Woo! And switch. Lower it down. Right knee up to the wall now. Left foot steps forward. Starting with our King Arthur again. Walk the hands up onto the left thigh. Lift up. Again, it's okay if the hips aren't connecting to the wall just yet. This is massive for hip flexors and quads, which are quite far removed from the central nervous system. And they can be a little bit intense to navigate into initially. There's a lot of sensations that come up that you maybe never have experienced before if you've never tried these shapes. So again, be patient. Just feel free to, to scratch the surface initially. Take in this uh, a visual stimulus as potential for a future practice. Something to work towards. You can stay here. Maybe grab opposite elbows. Wow. Oh, it's so good. No, maybe. Interlace, hands on left thigh. Let those hips dip while still engaging. Mula, mula banda. And maybe this is enough. Maybe reach back with the hands to the wall. Press the hands into the wall. Maybe catch the foot. Again, it's okay if you don't catch the foot yet. It'll come. Gently release. Hands can come to mat for two blocks. Straighten through the left leg. It's okay if it doesn't straighten all the way. Always honor your body. Moving into some really deep space right now. Keep scissoring the thighs together. Activate Mula Banda, firm those pelvic floor muscles. When you have that engagement, maybe float the arms up. Maybe hands reach back, connect to the wall. Catch the foot if it's available. Puff the chest. And gently release. Walk that left foot back in. Walk the left foot behind the right wrist. Release the left knee behind the left wrist. Half pigeon. Whew. Anything, even if you're not reaching back for the foot, 
it will help you to keep your hips in neutral. So you're still winning right now. Inhale as you find length and exhale and forward fold it. Glorious, glorious opening. I can, I can really feel all of you reactivating. This is exciting. This is going to be a really powerful flow for the collective. So again, please, please take your time with this. You don't have to go super deep into these shapes. Maybe you're just watching this video the first time. And then walking the hands back in. For those of you that did so on the other side, maybe float the arms up, reach back, climb the wall, maybe catch the foot. And notice even if you don't catch the foot, you can press the hands into the wall and charge up the heart opener. Really bust that chest open. And then gently release, exiting the same way we entered. Slide the left foot forward again, and walk the left foot back in. Whew, and release. All right, hopefully you have a brand new pair of hips. Roll out that mat again. Oh, there is more. So again, I absolutely love wall. Take your time with this stuff. We're gonna move into some uh, inversions. <laughs> so we've already done L shape uh, against the wall. Now let's try forearm L shape. And this will help to build your upper body. So like I was saying before, this is a huge blind spot in the yoga community. Again, primarily because we don't get to the wall and people just stay in vinyasa land. And when you just do down dog plank chaturanga, right, so plank chaturanga and the down dog, so what ends up happening is musculature gets tense around the shoulder girdle and it prohibits you from extending the arms straight up and down. So when you preclude yourself from even being able to access the straight up and down, you are completely writing off things like handstand and forearm balance because you don't have the most efficient line to then access. There's nothing wrong with planche. But if you're planching all the time, it, it ends up blocking off some really, really prominent nadis in our field. So we're going to work on the forearm L shape. You can actually measure it out legs distance away from the wall. Boom. And then elbows come right to where your hips are. Squeezing lock in between the upper arms, just like we did before. Imaginary lock, of course. Walk the feet up the wall, hips stacking directly over the shoulders. Now maybe one leg extends up. You don't have to come off of the wall. In fact, please don't. Stay connected. Build the central line. You will turn to face the wall in just a second. And then switch. Opposite leg extends up. And then release. Oh, all right. So now we're going to do it facing the wall. We did it facing away from the wall initially because I wanted you to find a straight line. Sometimes if you turn to kick up against the wall, you can create a lot of misalignments if that's the only way if you ever do it, spoken from experience. So if you have the props, you can use the block and the strap for this one. Take your block, take your strap, make a loop in your strap, about armpit to armpit is sufficient. And I don't know, you can get creative if you have uh, a belt or a dog leash. <laughs> this stuff is clutch though, really, really, it truly is for finding the proper alignment for your form balance. And form balance is a nice little intermediary middleman before we move into handstand. We are going to move into handstand too today if we have time. All right. Oh yeah, it's party time. Welcome to the end of the world of the apocalypse. <laughs> it's not what you think it is. It's really exciting. Great purge, no, great party. All right, so hands come around the block. More often than not, people try to grip the block this way. There's no, no harm or foul, but it's more of a measuring stick and it's intended to prevent the hands from sliding together in your pinch up. And therefore, you just kind of want to use your index finger and your middle finger as an L shape around the corner of the block, right? So here and here. And notice also, abduction, abduction, adduction with the hands. So you're, you're imprinting the muscle engagement in the arms for all of your inversions here. So turning to face the wall. I know, it's happening. 
Get excited, this is so fun. All right, so hands around the block, tuck the toes, walk your feet in as close as you can. One leg extends straight up, gaze is between the thumbs, little hop can take you up, find the wall. Push the floor away, re-extend out through the lifted leg, maybe flip the other leg up, and squeeze the legs together at the top. Couple deep breaths here. Super fun, right? And then slowly lower it down and release. All right, so just kind of introducing these things to you. We are also tempering the body for moving into deeper back bends as well. Take your block now, lengthwise. The block is going to go in between your shoulder blades. Hands can come around the sides of the block with the most surface area. And you'll bring your elbows directly up to the floorboard here. So coming into kind of a uh, elbow stance, not necessarily a forearm balance. Side of the block comes to the wall. Same side as in between the shoulder blades, the long side. Right into the bony process in between the scapula. Now tuck the toes and walk your feet in. Hug the shoulder blades around the block and breathe into that space. This one is for everyone. So if some of these postures, transitions seem a little bit daunting to try, this one should be accessible to anyone and everyone. Really delicious in the upper spine, reminding us to find that straight line. All right, so I have us do the harder posture first, namely for our balance. Now we're going to take hollow back which is actually a little bit easier with the support of the wall than your forearm balance. Lower it back down again, mind the block. Don't drop the block on your head, especially if it's a cork block or a wind block. Walk off to the side. Here we go. This unlocked my backbending practice. I did not think I was going to be able to backbend in this lifetime. <laughs> 20 years of surfing, it's a lot of stuff to navigate through. So I had a lot of work to do, but this was my, my most useful alchemical tool for that excavation work, and I'm so excited to share it with you. So you'll interlace the fingers, knuckles come right to the floorboard. If you want to, you can do a headstand too, but this is actually a forearm balance. So you'll tuck the toes, walk the feet in. You don't need to hop quite as aggressively as you would normally to get into your handstand or your forearm balance. Every time I teach this, people come right up to the wall with a big thud. So give yourself a little tiny hop. It doesn't have to be a big hop. You're already so close to the wall and you, we've taken it down a peg, right? We've taken the radius and the ulna out of the equation. We're just going through the humerus head bone here. Maybe one leg extends up. Little tiny hop takes you up. Find the wall. If you want to find your forearm balance first, you can find that engagement in the arms, arm muscles. But then bring you can bring one foot to the wall, and then let the hips come to the wall. Oh boy, here we go. Pull the chest forward. You really feel like a seaman going on a voyage on the bow of a ship but upside down, so delicious. Pulse that heart forward, and you're pulling energy through the, uh, the pelvic bowl, the sit bones, through the lumbar, and then pronouncing it, expressing it out, the thoracic. Press up, lift up, you can slide a foot down, and then press off the wall. Lower, child's pose. All right, a heart chakra is so fun to open up. Absolutely love it. So while we're here, while we're in this, this neck of the woods, this part of our sphere, just going to show you these things. Feel free to skip them. But again, I wanted to kind of dish on all the things wall today. So you can utilize these as a, a surplus when you feel ready to navigate into them. So same, same, you can start to slide your forearms back a little bit. 
obviously right next to the wall, you have a lot of rooting and rebounding forces. You pull yourself away from that source, you're going to have to rely upon your own stabilizing muscles to hold the shape. So maybe no interlace, hands can plant. Elbows, about shoulder distance away. Hands, also shoulder distance away. If you need to, you can use the block. I'm going with that. Take it up, find the wall. And then maybe one foot stays on the wall as you stag the other leg. Now, pulse the heart forward. See if you can float that other foot down. Just slide it down the wall to find the stag formation. Maybe both knees come in. Again, the wall's right there. So if you need it, you can use it. But we're building this shape so that we can sustain in the middle of the room without the wall. Now, and this is another one of those moments where you really catch the foot, it is so exciting. One foot can stay on the wall, while one foot comes down towards the earth, maybe catch the foot. It's okay if you don't catch it today, but that day when you catch the foot, again, truly momentous occasion, and switch. Other foot comes down, maybe catch the foot. Beautiful. Well done. And then of course, both feet can come down to the wall for a little Vipata, Vipriya, Bambasana. Walk the feet back up the wall for a little action. This is, this is technically a Shakasana. Coming up and over and release. Again, feel free to watch this stuff initially as you're taking it in. Your body is slowly understanding, digesting, figuring out how to emulate in your own vessel. All right, so moving on, uh, we're going to make our way into the handstand variations and upward facing bow variations with the wall. That being said, we're kind of workshopping this one. It's a little bit less of a flow, more of a workshoppy class, but uh, nonetheless, these are really potent downloads. I had to dish up on them. So coming up to stand, give yourself two feet distance away from the wall. Whew, we are gonna twist things out after this, I promise. So walk the hands up the wall, melt the heart towards the wall, coming into a puppy dog variation with the heart pressing against the wall. You want to intentionally stick your butt out and then try to get the whole chest to the wall, chin to the wall. Gently rise and release. Woo! Oh, it's so delicious. Okay. Now, taking the blocks. We're going to go into Earth Dynasty first to make sure that we have the space clear. This is where the blocks come in really handy. Use books if you've got them. This is so clutch. I could not lift up into Urdu Dharmasana to save my life for so long. And then a teacher showed me this and I was like, oh, we're home free. This is, this is the way. Give yourself about a uh, head's width distance between the blocks so that your head can rest between the blocks. Blocks come to 45 degree angles against the wall. So, and this is so, so crucial. You want it to be a 45 degree angle, especially if you don't have a little floorboard here for the block to rest on. When it's a 45 degree angle, the block won't slide just because the energetic force will hold it to the wall. Now, lie down, head between the blocks. Here we go. Actually, before we do that, let's do just a little bit of core work. All right, hands underneath the thighs. Engage your core, upright the spine, lean your weight back, float the feet up. Arms can extend forward, maybe straighten through the legs. Inhale, to lower. Exhale, to lift. Inhale, to lower. Exhale, to lift. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Lower hold. Here for five, four, three, two, one. All right. So before we take it up, just engaging the hamstrings and the glutes, couple hip dips. Press up, lift up, roll the spine up. Exhale, slowly lower. Press up, lift up, slowly lower. And then press 
up, lift up, pause at the top and pulse. Feel the hamstrings engaging. Feel the glutes engaging. Your lower abs engaging. These are all such crucial team players to transfer the energy through the midsection and into the thoracic. Now slowly lower. All right, so if you're not usually used to coming up into your full Urdhva Dhanurasana, you might surprise yourself with this one. Hands come to blocks. Fingers point towards your shoulders. Now wrap the knees in, wrap the elbows in. You're isometrically pulling the energy up. Press down through the balls of the feet. And remember the work that we did with Padabanda. So the outer edges would be down, lift the inner arches up. Squeeze the imaginary block between the thighs. Charge up the hammies, the glutes, the lower abs. Now press down, lift up. You can pause on the crown of the head. Readjust the shoulder blades together and down the back. Wrap those elbows in. Press up, lift up. Anyone surprise themselves? Full Urdhva Dhanurasana. Deep Ujjayi breath. Send it in. So glorious. Now maybe you can walk your feet in a little bit if you need to. Walk the hands up the wall. Woo! <laughs> I just feel like one of those, those games at the fair where you throw them out down and then it goes bing all the way to the top. So if, you, if you're not used to drop backs and you've never thought that a drop back would be a part of your practice, here you go. This is how you can slowly excavate and unearth so that is no longer a blind spot in your practice again. Now, trick is for coming back, don't reach back with one hand because that might cause some grievance in the lower spine. We are going to twist. We are going to twist it. But maybe... If you still have some juice left and you feel confident about it, sometimes people get coming up first and they're like, no way am I going back down. Feel free to skip. Again, any of this that doesn't feel within your realm, save it for later. You're infinite. You have plenty of time. <laughs> All right, so going back with both hands at the same time so as to keep your spine aligned. Engage your core. Charge up your legs. Hips come forward. Reach the hands back and connect to the wall, both hands at the same time. We're actually doing a hollow back handstand right now in another orientation. Now walk the hands down the wall. All the way back to the blocks. And maybe see if you can press your heart to the wall here. Tuck the chin, slowly lower. Back and down to the back. Gently release. Windshield wiper those knees side to side. Releasing your lower back. So I want us to keep going. If we have it in us, a little tiny bit more. This is the last thing with wall. We've, again, we've already done it in forearm balance. It's a different story when you add the radius and the ulna in again. So. Again, if you want to just take this in visually, that's all good. Now, before we move on so that we can keep going safely, take one of your blocks, place the block between your thighs. Squeeze the block with your thighs. Again, you can also use books. I prefer lengthwise, personally. Arms out to a T, palms flat, in line with your shoulders. Now lower the knees over to the right. Oh yeah, engaging your core, your obliques, back through to center. Keep squeezing the block, lower the knees over to the left. Yep, back through to center, massaging those intervertebral discs. Maybe if you still want more, extend the legs, maybe also block between the feet. Now lower the legs over to the right. As you inhale, Exhale on exertion, back through the center. Inhale to the left. Nice, get your stretch on, Molly. Exhale, back through the center. Let's do one more either side. Inhale to the right. Exhale, back through the center and inhale to the left. So glorious. Exhale, back through the center and release your blocks. Hug your knees in, give yourself a nice warm embrace. 
good work today for navigating into new space. Give yourself some gratitude. Good, this part, this is the cherry on top. So if you want to skip it, no worries. Start to take some rocks forward and back. Maybe take your hollow body rock. Hey, Molly, what's up? <laughs> All right, rock it up. This one is so fun. So we have gone over L shape. Now we're gonna go over handstand, and you don't have to navigate into this cross leg where we're headed next. Shins distance away from the wall, measure it out. Hands plant, shoulder distance apart. Middle fingers in line, thumbs in line. One leg extends up. As you hop, kick towards yourself. Plug the femur head bone into the hip socket. Find the wall. Now, extending out through the lifted leg. Push the floor right, plug the humerus head bones into the shoulder sockets. See if you can float the other leg up and off. Now squeeze the legs together at the top. Handstand. You can point. Hard flex. You can point. Whatever is your preference. Are you back to the wall? All right, take a breather, coming back down. So work your straight up and down handstand first. We want to find the stabilizer muscle engagement to protect the spine. But we're moving into hollow back, and this blew my mind when I realized it. Hollow back is the same orientation of humerus head and bone and shoulder socket as your Urdhva Dhanurasana. So if you're just working hollow back and you're not taking it down to the ground for your full Urdhva Dhanurasana, you're still doing great work. Keep it up. But if you are taking it all the way down, know that. Know that this is really, really prime strength building. And if you ever, this is what I love about this too. So often the biggest fear of learning how to do handstand in the middle of the room is flipping over into a back bend. So if you can create this strength, you're going to create a sense of confidence, resting in the knowing that should the case arise, that you flip over into a back bend by surprise accidentally, you will have the internal environment necessary to protect and hold everything in place. Okay, so starting to fall back first. Kick with the other leg, switch off. Please kick with both legs. So about a shin's distance away. Hop it up, find the wall. Now, you can bring your feet into a little bit of a chair pose. Melt the heart towards the middle of the room, stick your butt towards the wall. It is so glorious, this is some of my favorite stuff. So happy to be sharing it with you right now. Maybe if you want to, find that stack. See if you can slide that other foot down. Tiptoe off of the wall and maybe work 
This is this is a good one too, where you can kind of find your balance off of the wall. See if you can switch the legs. So often we become codependent on wall. So slowly breaking our dependency again with wall. Try another one. And then when you're ready, both feet can come to the wall. And this is here you're in your hollow back with straight legs. Oh, it's so good. And then walk one foot down to the floor, followed by the other. Boom. We're here. Full herb D. You can also use the wall again as a source of energy. Maybe walk one foot back up, press the foot into the wall, hop up and over. So this took me forever to get. <laughs> I'm kind of a klutz. Maybe it comes with being a Sagittarius moon, but <laughs> and it's actually rather quite poetic. Speaking of Sag, we are following our heart. So as you move through the top cross and think, pull the gaze through. The heart will follow, and the rest of the body will follow. So, you know, follow your heart. <laughs> Good work today. Maybe have some fun with that one. If it's a little bit out of your realm today, feel free to skip it. Wow, my heart chakra. So blown, so blown wide open. Again, what tends to happen with big back bends is the lower most discs can get slightly compressed. So we'll end with some twists. Take a seat. <laughs> Molly's like, I see my chance. I'm joining in on the action. All right, so I'm gonna mirror you guys. Draw your right knee in, extend the left leg out. Right leg comes up and over the left. Now, left leg can stay straight or lean onto your left seat. Slide the left heel back towards your outer right hip. Right hand behind the sacrum, left arm extends. Find the spinal elongation first. Exhale, left elbow to the outer edge of the right knee. And gently twist as you inhale, upright the spine. And as you exhale, twist deeper. And again, the twists are so necessary. They will allow you to thrive in your backbending practice. They will massage the intervertebral discs so that those guys don't get compressed over time. They'll also strengthen the muscles surrounding the spine so that you can also build some infrastructure, especially around the lumbar. And then gently release, counter twist to your left. Forward fold it if you'd like. <laughs> Back through the center, stack the knees, heels towards outer hips. Now before you forward fold, side bends are also very useful for counterbalancing our back bends. Let's take a side bend. So right arm comes down to the ground, sweep the left arm up and overhead, root down through your left seat, maybe the right forearm lowers all the way down. Amazing, again, opening up those spongy discs. <laughs> back through the center. You can kind of walk forward and all the way to the left. Right arm sweeps up and overhead. I love the side bends in Gomu from Mukasana because it will help you to keep your sit bones grounding into the earth. Back through the center. Forward fold once more. And then roll the spine back up through the seated. Walk the hands back behind. Flare kick the legs. Then left foot to the ground. Right leg can stay straight. And I should have mentioned before, with the gummy legs, you can also sit comfortably cross-legged. Left hand behind the sacrum. Right arm extends. Exhale, right elbow out into left knee. Inhale as you lengthen. Always want to lengthen before any movement in the spine. Exhale, twist. Gaze over the left shoulder, deep and jaggy breaths. And again, this is a really 
challenging practice. I just unloaded on all of the wall transmissions and there's more, so I'll, I'll probably come back to, to more wall transmissions. Maybe this will be the first of a series of up against the wall. <laughs> Counter twist to the right. We are connecting the lovers within Ford Folded. Masculine and feminine energy channels. True Tantrika pulls the energy all the way up the spine, finding balance between the polarities in each of the cerebral spinal centers. Stack the knees, heels towards outer hips, simple cross legged is fine. So you get the side bend to the left, right arm sweeps up and overhead. Again, it's okay if that forearm doesn't reach the ground today. Roll the right shoulder back, back over through center, and then to the right. Right arm sweeps up and overhead, side body stretch. Back through the center. Amazing forward folding. Enjoy. And then roll the spine back up. You're seated, not quite done with the wall downloads. A lot of the hands back behind. Straighten legs out in front. Balance knees, much by the feet. All right. So we're going to take shoulder stand as a conclusion up against the wall. Sit literally right next to the wall. And then lie down onto your side. Bring your hips, your sit bones right up to the wall. Now roll onto your back. Bring the legs straight up to the wall. Now bring the arms along the side body so that they're ready to receive. Keep the chin tucked, gaze directly up. Bending in the knees so both legs are at 90 degrees. Press down through the feet and roll the hips up. Coming into shoulder stand, walk the hands down the back, pull that energy through the feet, through the legs and directly into your cervical spine, deep giant breaths, maybe extend the legs up, maybe lower the feet down, pull off some plow, can bend the knees towards the ears for your squeeze. And rising the legs back up again, shoulders stand. Bending in the knees, feet to wall once more. Work this slow, control descent down. It is so glorious articulating one vertebra at a time. Oh, wow. <laughs> Love this stuff. Before we take it into our final resting pose, right ankle on top of the left thigh. This is another one that's for everybody. Slide that left foot down. Ooh, gotta love it. Thread the needle against the wall. It's so delicious. Send in breath. And you can actually, so this one gets a little bit tricky. Slide the left foot down to the floorboard. Now, right foot should be able to come to the ground. Left hand presses the right knee away and twist. Oh, love it. Back through the center, back into your figure four. Thread the needle. And then straighten through left leg, re extend right leg up and back. Left ankle stacks on top of right thigh. Slide the right foot down. What's so beautiful about this, too, is you don't have to use your arm strength to pull the right leg in. And now, therefore, you can use your left hand to press the left knee away. Not even using strength either. You're using your bones. So you're using the radius and the ulna as a little bit of a fulcrum here. Now maybe slide the right foot down to the floorboard. You're rolling your left hip to stack on top of the right. Left foot to the ground. Right hand can press the left knee away as you twist. Gaze over the left shoulder. So much beautiful space, and then slide it back. We extend the right leg, left leg extends up, still not quite done. Draw the soles of feet together, knees out wide. Baddha Kanasana. Hands come to the inner thighs and press the knees towards the wall. Mm. 
You're going to extend the legs back up and then rest in complete stillness. Let's end with legs up against the wall. If you want to take Shavasana, the corpse pose, to get completely down onto the ground, feel free. Otherwise, just enjoy. Love the sensation of the weight of the leg pressing into the, the hip socket. And just allowing all of this new information to settle, this new arrangement of gunas to integrate digesting the karmas that we were able to burn up and process. And the highest light within me truly sees and honors. The highest light within each of you. I thank you for your practice. It truly benefits all beings, this work that you do. Namaste.